All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So Joe Douglas was at it again. He's brought in more free agents, more undrafted free agents, and we got to talk about them all. So let's dive in. So player number one is cornerback from Oregon State, Isaiah Dunn. Now, interestingly enough, Isaiah Dunn goes out and signs the biggest contract for an undrafted cornerback ever. Ever. So that should give you a pretty good indication on how much the Jets front office and the coaching staff values Isaiah Dunn, and rightfully so. I mean, this is a corner with size. He's six feet tall, great speed, 4'3", 840. He's a balanced corner, and I would say his best overall uh, quality, right, his, his number one trait, what he's bringing to this Jets team is burst, bur burst in short spaces, the ability to break out of zone coverage. In this Sala cover four, cover three system, it's imperative that corners know how to really close on on routes whether it's an out route a screen pass a curl route you need your zone corners to dump the back pedal and kick it into high gear to come up and neutralize a play okay or in some cases make a play on the football uh, it's, it's extremely extremely important Isaiah Dunn possesses that ability next up kicker from SMU Chris Nagar you look at what he did in 2020 his made field goal percentage was 81 percent okay he was perfect 12 for 12 on field goals between 20 and 39 yards okay perfect from 40 to 49 yards he was five for seven and then he was 0 for two from 50 and beyond so we're looking at the kicker position right now I feel like we haven't had that solid kicker since Jason Myers and by the way that Mike McCagnan letting Jason Myers walk a couple years ago still haunts me to this day because we have had nothing but issues at this position so it couldn't hurt Again, undrafted free agent here. We'll see what he can do. I'm pumped for the uh, you know the preseason and camp and all that good stuff. You never truly know who can be the league's next best kicker. Next up, safety from Auburn, Jordan Peters. Peters is a high motor player, a high effort player, a guy who does really well in the box, a guy who is not afraid of contact. He will come up and make a hit. You're looking at all of the common themes or the you know the 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 trends that we're seeing with all of these defensive backs that are being added to this team by Joe Douglas. Whether you want to talk about the drafted guys or the undrafted guys, all of them are extremely tough. They play really really hard. They are all versatile and they all fly. I mean, I feel like the majority of them can line up at safety, at corner, at slot corner. Like in some cases, as that hybrid linebacker role, we're seeing that with Sherwood uh, also from Auburn as well. So really, really interesting stuff here. I'm so glad that the team is just doubling down on corners and DBs. I feel like every time we you know, check social media, the Jets are adding another one. So it's awesome. I love the competition and we need to start, you know, adding some talent to this room because it, it it is a thin position, especially at corner. So love the move. Next up, one of my favorite acquisitions that the Jets have made so far in the undrafted market here, it's Purdue tackle Grant Hermans. You look at the size, six foot seven, 300 pounds. You look at the versatility, he can play left tackle. He can play right tackle. You look at how he moves in open space, pretty good. He's a four-year starter in a zone-blocking attack for the Boilermakers. What more do you want? What more do you want? You look at it. Overall, his career has been pretty solid, too, for Purdue. I mean, I really believe that Hermans will make the team. If he And if he doesn't make the team, he will be, he, he'll be on the practice squad. I just, I, I really, really like the signing a lot. I think the upside is there as well. But really, I mean, what more can you ask for? A guy with great size that can move, he fits the system, has a ton of experience playing in a, you know, the same exact blocking scheme. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Next up, defensive tackle from Rutgers, Michael Dwumfor. Six foot one, 300 pounds. Dwumfor spent some time at Michigan and then ended up transferring back home to uh, to Jersey to play for Rutgers in his final year. And I actually watched a lot of Rutgers football last season. And the one thing that always stood out about Dwumfor was just the burst, the, the get off. I always felt like as soon as the ball was snapped, his first step was great. Uh, just just smashing gaps, right? Just between the center and the guard, just really hitting holes hard. I don't really see Dwayne Ford being like a big sack guy or anything like that. It's never really been his game, but I do feel like he can be that rotational piece because in this solid defense, we always need fresh bodies just cycling in, cycling out. I mean, really for any defense out there, you need a lot, you need fresh legs on the on the D-line, but really for the solid defense, we've seen a lot of guys take a lot of snaps in the past couple seasons with the San Francisco 49ers. Next up, tackle from Air Force, Parker Ferguson, and this one could be the most underrated out of them all. He was a three-year starter, six foot three, 305. Ferguson actually was first team all Mountain West 
back-to-back -back seasons. That's huge. I, I love the Mountain West Conference. It's great because you come, you could do whatever you want on Saturday night. You come home and you watch, you throw on some Mountain West. It, it's midnight and it's like going in halftime so you could just watch Mountain West football all night same with the Pac-12 but anyway Ferguson again you're looking at him from the tackle perspective he has good size I like the tackles currently right obviously it's the starting guys you have Makai Becton and George Pham but behind those guys I do want to get younger and I do want to eventually find the answer at right tackle because even though I love George Pham I don't see him being the guy for the next 10 seasons. Um, I, I just kind of view Fant more so as that stop stopgap kind of guy for you know for the next couple seasons, right? Maybe this season and next season, and then we'll move off of him and have our answer at right tackle. So I d I, I really want to not only just of, of course try out different tackles, but I want to get as many productive guys in the building early so we have our answer, so we can kind of you know narrow down our list here. But I mean, what what's a better way to start than adding a first team mount you know first team all conference player to your offense who's an absolute mauler in the run game now i will say this the transition from uh, the air force offense which is like a triple option to the nfl might be a little bit of a concern but that's what that that's what camp is about that's what preseason is about he is the size production and accolades to make it all happen at the next level so i'll leave it there thanks so much for watching let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section who are you most excited about whether it's in this video or in part one because we brought in some really really solid guys yesterday i know it sounds like i'm a homer kind of a fan but as unbiasedly as possible i'm looking at these undrafted pickups and i'm saying to myself joe douglas is knocking it out of the park so i'll leave it there thanks so much for watching and as always go jets